And just like that, it is episode four of the Journal of the Scots Book Club. And I had to go back to the well in the Lego book. This is a really funny book called What is Lego? And so this one actually brings me back to the holidays. Last year, my parents, bless their heart, uh, thought it would be great uh, to get me this series, even though it's kind of a kid's book, not really meant for adults. But I will say you can learn a couple things as adults and maybe... I really recommend if you're a parent out there, take, you know, read this to your child. Reading to your kids every day is really important. And uh, while I didn't read this, uh, I, maybe I should have read this book to the kids, um, but it was mainly for me and my enjoyment, mainly because there's a lot about, you know, being an A-fall in here. So my, my parents were like literally dying inside. So they had to get me this book. It is currently available on Amazon. In fact, it's even a discount. I checked it out just like that, and it is currently only selling for $4.99. It's normally $5.99. You can save a dollar on Amazon. Uh, get this book for your child and read and maybe learn a couple things about Lego that you had no idea. So this is a, a part of a, a best New York best time, or excuse me, New York Times. Do I have to start this over? New York Times best-selling series, What is uh, the What Is series. So you'll see there's lots of other, um, there's who was Walt Disney, who was Milton Bradley. There's all sorts of characters. You'll see this a lot at book fairs. Not necessarily this book, but you'll see this series available at uh, those uh, school book fairs all across the country. So it's by Jim O'Connor, and it's not actually endorsed by a Lego group, so it has nothing to do with Lego. It's just a book about Lego and somebody's opinion uh, on it. And although they try to do a lot of factual stuff, but it's kind of a little iffy on the facts. And also, it only came out a couple years ago, but it's already starting to fall behind the time, times, like when it talks about here are the top sets or here are the the sets with the most pieces, that kind of thing. It's already out of date because, as we know, the Titanic came up this year, the world map, the Colosseum, all of those are not really available in this book. But I, I set out a couple pieces that I thought were interesting. I'll read some expert excerpts from it. Um, it's really interesting. They, they talked about how, you know, obviously how it was started. A lot of people may not know that the I shouldn't really give away too much of this book, but <laughs> how Lego burnt down like two times uh, and even had a fire at their other factory. And then they're like, they gave up on wood toys and went to plastic. Um, but I thought it was really interesting and in kind of like the the qualities of of Lego and what it was all about. It was It's all about unlimited play potential, fun for girls and boys, fun for every age, including myself as an AFOL. Um, so even though there's, there's many... Gr grown-ups who love building lego absolutely playing year-round which is also a really good thing i mean on a rainy day even in the summer you can play healthy quiet play now that's kind of a debatable thing and that's where you know lego really struggled at some point because it's competing against roblox and video games and nintendo which almost nearly bankrupted the company uh, long hours of play so think of like the, even the creator three in one or the ability to just create your own mocks and do your own imaginative play. I used to build lots of lots of cities and space galaxies and fights and all sorts of stuff and castles. And I just think that's amazing. And development of imagination and creativity. The more Lego, the greater value. I actually kind of live by that. You know, if you look at behind me more lego more better right it's kind of what uh what i live by extra sets always available so always having just tons of available sets that are great and quality in every detail now i know that's a little bit of a debatable i think this is becoming a little bit more of a struggle although the brick itself there's nothing better it just there just isn't anything better than the brick itself although i think sometimes you know the the credo of um, you know, always nothing but the best is kind of lacked sometimes, you know, when they've talked about like opportunities, like in Star Wars, especially um, that it talked about video games and how it nearly bankrupted the company. So then they, they kind of did a leadership change, brought in some things and decided to stay very focused on, you know, innovating the actual brick 
systems itself, which is great. I know they, they even talked about in here about uh, Bionicle uh, saving Lego at one point, or at least kind of at least getting Lego back into profitability because it was own thing. Um, although you know, that one actually had some pretty funny gaffes that it was kind of um, based on some people, the native people of New Zealand, <laughs> which caused a, a few issues. Um, it talks quite a bit about um, A falls and what does that mean and being super fans and how they create mocks and go to conventions. And uh, it actually talks about how there's this whole culture of creating videos. Look at what I'm doing here uh, and having fun and, and imagining. And just, uh, and they talked about all, like Lego ideas and how they can kind of. Um, the fans kind of helping design sets, um, which also I think was started by Bionicle because there's like so many rabid Bionicle fans that they kept emailing the designers and then the designers would actually use, incorporate some of those ideas into the actual sets themselves. Um, there's at the end, there's uh, uh, some photos to kind of like, you know, how, you know, the Legoland Billand and how the uh, some of the wood toys and original founders and new leaders and um, it also talks a lot about uh, Mindstorm and how that really kind of it took it became the intelligent br brick um, and how much you know Lego has really innovated over the years. So that is what is Lego. I always like to end with, of course, the funny Amazon reviews and this one uh, I I didn't look too far ahead. I clicked on a couple just to make sure that there are some, and they were pretty funny. So here we go. First Amazon roof review for what is Lego. My four-year-old is a huge Lego. This is a five-star review. My four-year-old is a huge Lego fan right now. We read a chapter every night at bedtime. The chapters are perfect length for this purpose. And my husband and I found it very interesting as well. We will be looking for other books in this series after how well this went. Look at that. Another one. Disappointed. Four stars. So he kind of liked it, but kind of didn't, right? Black and white, no color. He doesn't want this book. I wish we had books like this in school. My homeschooler loves this book. I can't wait to order another. It was a great e -at informational resource for reluctant readers. <laughs> let's see. Let's scroll down the list. Great for Lego fans. My son has loved all the books and he has gotten from this series. And of course, as a Lego fan, he definitely loved this one. So with that, I would agree. This is a nice little book. Thanks to my parents for the fun inclusion in last year's holiday. I have read through it and now I've even made a video about it. So this has been episode four on what is Lego. And we will catch you on episode episode five next week with another book in the journal of the scots book club journal out